Carolina Mukova won the toss and asked her opponent to serve. Jill Krabas, Candy Reed in the commentary box as we see Wong begin brightly. Carolina Mukova, Jill, particularly experienced, but it's going to be some nerves early on. I would think for both at this stage always nervous. Muhova was saying even in her first round match that she was feeling the nerves because the first rounds are always tricky to get through but I think it would almost be unnatural if <laughs> these players weren't feeling nerves at this point. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Well if she is nervous Wong Jin Yu certainly didn't show it there. Began with an ace, finishes Perfect. with a hold to love. She's rocking and rolling. We need to remind ourselves that Wang Xin Yu is also playing her very first fourth round at a major today. Reached the second round. Five points and counting for Wong. Top 10 opponent for the fourth time in her career. Look at that on the board, she'll be relieved. Jill, the last time Wong was in a fourth round at a major was French Open. Got beaten love and love by Iga Swiatek. Iga can do that to some <laughs> yes, opponents. <she> can. <laughs> <laughs> from the start. Wong has done a good job of taking that risk when she's had time. I think she realizes she knows she's got to pull the trigger a little bit sooner against Mohova. She's definitely come out very confident in these first couple games.
43. Just missing the deep return. She's very good at that, putting that first ball right back at the service feet. Great shot running forehand from Muhova. Wong oh, almost seemed like she could have had a play on it and she pulled her racket back at the last second thinking that one might have drifted wide, but just nice rotation on that forehand to have that ball dip down into the court. I do like that Wong already at anything short. She's looking to hit and transition forward. She's moving through that shorter ball so nicely. Left left. Forehand, this one up the line for Mukova. There's her coach, Emil Miska. He hails from Slovakia. And Mukova loves that running forehand. We already saw in the first point that cross court, but she can redirect it anywhere from that side. Beautifully done, isn't it? It's never easy on that shorter ball. Mukova using the slice to approach. He comes up with a great volley. She got great depth on it. That was the key there because Wong was inching forward a little bit, had to backtrack. But it was it was a good volley. I love that she didn't try and go for the line so much, just straight back down, back footing Wong. break point and she's got a second serve to have a look at. Oh. And it is a break. An early start for Karolina Mukova. She leads 2-1. Two, two games to one first set. trying to reach the quarterfinals at the US Open for the very first time. This is her second round of 16 appearance. So we reach this stage 2020. There's much surprise that these two have got to this stage. Both have had great run-ups to the fourth and final major of the year, results-wise. Thank you. 
15, 13. That's going to be a big tactic for Wong to continue to take advantage of the second serve, just constantly being aggressive. You don't want to back off on that second serve and give Mukova time on that to get ready. That's great aggression from Wong. caught Karolina Mukova's practice partner out on the grounds. He just finished and asked him what she was working on in practice. He said she was hitting a lot of drop shots. Mukova saves the break point. Great depth from Wong, especially right away off the return. It was a good pickup from Mukova. It looked like Mukova almost slipped at the baseline, just motioning at the last mistake. The ball just skidding off the line. out there is she the world number 10 right point number two coming up for Wong A lot of second serves is the check. Yeah. Well, she's been a little bit worried to go into the Wang Xinyu backhand with that second serve, and that was why. That was a pulsating backhand from the Chinese youngster. Two games all.
15. And just a reminder, usopen.org, your online home for point-by-point -point live scoring, highlights, real-time stats and draws. You can visit the official tournament site at usopen.org. Jill and I are living on it. to see Rukova taking advantage of the slower serve. 15. And that's what we were speaking about, about Mukova's game, is she can adapt so quickly. All of a sudden, she can just completely decide to hit and come into the net, just apply that pressure. she do it again food for thought for Wong Xinyu that's for sure it's probably only going to be one winner of the little cat and mouse game between these two <laughs> Mukova with the extraordinary hands of hers both showing great hands. I felt Wong did a great job of handling this short ball as well. Nice touch cross court, and I think it caught Mukova by surprise for a moment, but she's so quick to get up to that ball and almost held that, waited for Wong to make a move down the line. Beautiful touch. That's a great shot. That point in particular was all about court position from Mukova. Never got too far behind the baseline and took that ball on the rise. So it's another break of serve for Carolina Mukova. She leads three, three games to two. Three games to two for serve. Three breaks of serve in succession here on Armstrong. Any real great schedule we've got on tap. Matches coming thick and fast once more. And this is where we're starting. Mukova has got the break back on Wang Xinyu, serving here at 3-2. She's enjoyed wins over Storm Hunter, Magdalena Freck, and Taylor Townsend. All of those matches ending in straight sets, only one tiebreaker. That was against Taylor Townsend in the previous round. Townsend, of course, a victor in round two against Beatrice Hadaj Meyer. Third. Smart serve right there into the body because Wong's been taking the second serve return so early. Such a good time to go into the body when you see your opponent inside the baseline. really the first game that Wong hasn't connected on some of these returns. She's been so solid in getting these returns back in play, for forcing Mukova to get into the point. A nice service game here so far for Mukova. A couple free points. Goes for the extreme angle. Got a little bit more room to breathe, haven't you, at 40, love?
One more game point before it gets a little more complicated. Toss got away from her, was so far out in front. Ended up pushing that one long. First double fault for Mukova to go with her one ace. Done. Not an easy bounce smash. What's smart of her to let it bounce? So you could see she just put her hand up, the sun potentially just in her eyes for a moment. So really smart to take her time on this one. Got underneath the ball beautifully, to, so she was able to reach up for that overhead. So important on this shot as well, isn't it? To pick your spot and not change your mind. so far. That's what we've come to expect from the ultra talented Czech. And she could do it from the baseline as well. Vukova, 40 love up in that game. Give herself a little bit of trouble. Comes through it unscathed. 4-2. Thirty-six matches already this season has Karolina Rukova lost just twelve. Well, we know Wong's got great reflexes Locking at the on. net, but Rukova. Good job, not losing focus in this. She could have easily felt like she had the point one, but got ready immediately. Wong, as we know, playing doubles as well with Shea Su Wei. So she's got the experience of those reflexes at the net, feels very comfortable coming forward. saw Wong Zhu use confidence at the net just grow and grow, didn't we, at Roland Garros. At the beginning, they were playing two back, her and Shea Su Wei. At the end, it was one up, one back, with Shea Su Wei working her magic in all parts of the court. A real conviction behind that forehand slice. Cover. Looking for a second break. A little insurance. Thank you. 
Third straight game that Karolina Mukova has had break points, and for the third straight game, she converts. Mukova leads five games to two for six. Well, it's a shame for Wang Xinyu had such a misplayed uh, with the new balls. It's Mukova serving for the set. 15. Karolina Mukova gets to the final in Cincinnati. Be Arina Sabalenka in the semi finals in three. She's got Sabalenka's number this season, lost to Coco Goff. That's good pressure. Another good return from Wong and cutting off that angle much better on the backhand. Mukova wasn't that far away from that shot. It just had that much power on the backhand from Wong. And sometimes that in particular can be the difference. Wong's been so consistent overall on the return and that time a second serve, just go for a little margin on that. You've got a little edge, 15-30, Mukovo serving. Just go for some more height, more safety margin on that return. So a little bit of window of opportunity for Wong to get one of these breaks back. Doesn't have to do too much to deserve it in this game. Still struggling with a first serve percentage. Of intent. There's the backhand we've been talking about. A beauty. 5 3. That was great. That's where I feel like she's more comfortable is when she's taking that second serve on the rise. The one that she missed, she decided to back up and try and flatten it out. And sometimes that's okay to, to change it up, to mix it up. But I think she's so strong taking it early. I think she can continue to do that on those second serve returns. Bit of a shaky game, you'd have to say, from Karolina Mukova, though. Oh. And the last thing Wong Xinyu oh. wants to do right now is hand the advantage back. Gotta try and keep the pressure on. Ask the check to try and serve it out again. Here I have that. Wong Shenyu actually started playing tennis at the age of five with her father. He runs an academy in Shenzhen. Dad is actually the head of tennis in that part of China.
great approach from Mukova right on the baseline, just rushing on that volley. That was surprised to see. Normally she's so calm, but just misjudged that one. It's a good pickup from Wong. A little injection of pace from that forehand, which has been vicious today. And that's the one that she is willing to apply that extra acceleration to that forehand side, especially on the stretch. Her wrist is so quick through the ball from that position. A makeable forehand yeah. could cost her very dearly. Wong Xin Yu with her 11th unforced error. And Karolina Mukova has a set point. Smart change up on the serve. Took a little pace off, made sure she got that first serve in. Last one, 86 miles an hour, but it had good depth and almost looked like Mukova thought that one was coming a little bit faster. Second bite of the cherry, though. Good penetrating stuff from the baseline. Throughout that rally, Wong targeting the backhand side of Mukova, and then one chance Mukova got the foreign, and she took advantage of it. Again, it's easy pickings for That's Karolina it. Mukova. Three breaks for her. And another 6 3. It's Karolina Mukova on the front foot. Law 15. I feel one thing Wong could do. Just noticing in the last couple games, I think she could be more patient staying on that backhand cross-court rally. I feel like her backhand is so strong, and she's could just, for me, getting a little impatient to change direction to the forehand side. I don't think she needs to do that so early on in the rally. completely lifting off that 15. forehand. It's easy to do that off the slice. You have to be willing to stay low with the legs, accelerate through. And she's done that a few times where she just lifts her body up at the last second on the forehand. And that's where you lose control. Patterns, as we know, Jill, is so important in this sport. 
And you'd have to say the one thing that Wong is perhaps slightly better than Mukovara is the backhand. She's got a bigger backhand, so if she can keep the backhand into the Czech's backhand corner, that might be a good play for her. I agree. I think she's sure. trying, especially on the forehand. There's been numerous times she's backfooted Mukova and hit behind her on the backhand side. But it's so easy to get impatient when Mukova can neutralize so well with that slice. And so it, you get into this pattern where you can be impatient, you get tempted to go to the forehand. That's exactly what Mukova wants you to feel. Would you say the slice, particularly in the women's game, is rather underutilized? We saw, of course, Ash Barty hit it so well. She could hit the floater one and then the one that really dug into the court. I think so. I think you're starting to see more women incorporate it and try and add that versatility to their game. Pagula is another example that's starting to use the slice much more effectively when she's on the defense. Mukova's always naturally had that in her game from a young age. I like that play, though, serve and volley. Don't see it that often on a second serve as well, so that's a good tactic, surprising your opponents. First time she's done it in this match so far, and she had the exact volley she needed. Just opened up her body. It's incredibly important, isn't it, on the forehand volley to turn the shoulders, because you have the natural turn on the backhand right. volley. where she needs to target. That's the perfect play from Wong when she's coming forward. Again, flattening that backhand out. It shoots through the court so much. That's why Mukova mishit that ball. serve on the mm -hmm. point down. That perhaps has been so much of the Czech success this year. We know all about the all-court game, but the fact that she's able to produce in the big moments. She was down, wasn't she, in the third set against Irina Sabalenka in the semi-finals of Roland Garros. And that time, Mukova also found a way. Such an exciting final as well against Iga Svientek, so close to picking up her first major title. She's got a taste for it now. She wants more. a little further back on that return, but much better margin over the net. And great depth as well, just inside the baseline. And how often do we see the first game of any set being closely fought? Could be a big momentum shifter. 
Wong Shin Yu has already had a break point chance. Up the line. Advantage one. She had so much court to cover, and after this forehand, knew she didn't get enough on it and immediately covered the open court. I think she lugs that target, especially on the backhand side. She's not going to miss one that much. Got so balanced. a similar serve wasn't it mm -hmm. on this break point as it was the last this time Wong was ready for it but can't execute on the final ball Lukova knows that Wong's backhand's the stronger side, so can sometimes be a risk to serve there. But you got to change it up occasionally. And there she caught Wong protecting that forehand side on the return. Clock strikes midday. And Carolina Bukova. Finish this game off. The answer, a resounding no, not yet. I feel like she could kick that second serve to the forehand on that side too. That one, Wong's been super solid on that kick backhand. And Mukova has the capability to do that. She, she can easily go through that ball and go to the forehand side on the second serve. Forehand return error, and it was a big one. It's that forehand, isn't it, which is breaking down from Wong. 11 unforced errors on that side. With a high tennis IQ, Mukova will know exactly where the weakness is. We're oh, expecting, yeah. yeah, expecting to go there. Just didn't get the spin, did she? I think on that ad side, she just feels more comfortable naturally kicking out wide. Most players do. See a lot of players practicing changing that direction on that serve because it can be such a good tool to have. She's better on the deuce side, kicking it out wide. Advantage, She has been mixing it up nicely. I suppose the ad court backhand kicker serve is easier because you're more used to hitting it against a fellow right-hander. You're more used to going up to their backhand. Correct. And the angle, too. Your court position. It's just easier to kick it out wide. What will she do on this second serve? She's just missed it. It must have been by a rabbit's whisker. <laughs> it was a tough volley. It was a great return, low to the feet. 
A lot of times you can see your opponent sneak forward and Wong for sure caught her out of the corner of her eye, was able to dip that ball, make it a tough volley for Mukova. Chiefs number seven. Asking for trouble, hasn't she, uh, Carolina Mukova? Missing too many first serves. return from Wong Xinyu backs it up as well a little look to her camp she's got the early break of serve here in set two. First game second set which has fought hard in that game Wong and really dug deep and that last break point very impressive Looking a little rattled, perhaps, when Wong comes forward. Fifteen. Well, these double faults from both players have really come because they're jumping backwards on their second serve and that just gives you an indication that they're both expecting that big aggressive return from from the other side. Yeah, it's been a real struggle for both players, isn't it, to win points behind their second deal. a winning percentage for the match of 25%. Mukova slightly lower. Mystic Mukova. <laughs> you could see Wong just hoping that that one was going to go out. But a bit unlucky that for Wong that Mukova just held her position on that cross with that swing volley. She had to play on that one too. I think you got to take that risk and just hit it. There's nothing worse, is there, than looking back and seeing the ball land in. Your heart just drops. <laughs> Triple break point one, I should say, getting ahead of myself. Game. Oh, that's disappointing from Wong Xinyu. She did so well to get the break Wong in the first Wong. game and she's handed it right back. Good work though from Karina Mukova. One game all. It's so important when you get broken in the first game just not to panic. And Mukova, I don't think she played her best game there. She's having problems with one of her eyes there. Did 
don't know how you feel, Jill, but and I played at a lower level than you did, but I was always very wary of touching my eyes with my fingers during a match just because of the sweat. Could get some sunscreen in there. Same. I Yeah, the sunscreen in particular, because all of a sudden it starts stinging. Mm. You, don't, you don't want that to happen, but most of the players do a good job of going over, getting the towel and wiping that off their face. Sight seems perfect though. <laughs> no problem on the very difficult low backhand volley. Very calm on the on Good the approach game. shot as well. The forehand didn't rush this one at all. Waited and saw Wong go for that defensive slice, and that's when she took the opportunity to sneak forward. Just past the hour mark now, which means Mukova has been on court for five hours, 19 total. Wang Xinyu a little more at seven hours, 11. style of point tactically for Wong was 15, excellent because she used the forehand in a much more effective way, higher, heavier, and that sets her up really well for that backhand to be able to attack and be inside the court. Love that she stayed on the backhand cross there as well, stayed patient. That served very effectively, hasn't she? The T1 from the third uh, court. I feel like she can go to that spot the majority of the time because even if Wong gets a good hit on it, it's still a ball that's more attackable compared to her backhand. Mukova able to get a little slice of the balls moving away from her opponent. drive volley, wasn't it, from Wong Xin Yu. Perhaps an even better defensive lob, but it's Wong who gets the point. Three breaks, 2-1, Wang Xinyu. One leads, two games to one, second set. Tall. Lot 50. She actually worked did Wang Xinyu with Bertrand Perret, the Frenchman, for about four days before she teamed up with Mira Hafatin. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> really strong from that position, Mukova. I think she's good at geometry. 
Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Not bad. Lock off you. We could be about to see another break of serve. Amazingly, it would be the seventh consecutive break of this entire match. Left for serve. So on a point behind her second serve in this set as Wong. See if she can change that. And that taking all the sting out of the ball. 15 14. A little unlucky, like the intention from Mukova to hit and come forward, just had to keep going forward because she was so far inside the service line already. Sometimes that off pace shot <laughs> so difficult to create your own pace. Mukova just not getting a ton of acceleration on that slice. Got a taste of her own medicine, didn't she? And it is a break. Number six for Karolina Mukova. Two games all. Two games all, second set. Wong's made so many unforced errors on that forehand side. I'm a little bit surprised that she's not trying to run around and... and Fifteen. Well, Mukova knows she wants to hit it to the forehand side of Wong, and that's exactly what she was trying to do there. Maybe didn't feel in the best position to do it, but knows she has to go to that side. That's where you got to pick and choose exactly where you feel the most balanced to be able to, to change it up. Down she goes. A great return from Wong. There's a lot of heat on that. It almost helped Wong hit her forehand you better. Can't. Noticing Mukova serving and volleying forced her to get more aggressive on that side, swing through the ball better. Always worrying, isn't it, when you see Karolina Mukova go down? She's just had so many injury worries. Last year, she was in fact told her career could be over. Problems with back, abdominals, ankle. Missed last year's Australian Open because of it.
sensational. Excellent movement of the ball from Mukova off the baseline. Just kept the moving along from corner to corner. Mukova saying she chose tennis over handball when she was 12 years old. There were tennis courts around 50 meters from her house. It was very convenient. Later moved to Prague to train as so many of the Czechs do. It's a hotbed of tennis activity. Left and we may just see the WTA Tour finale in Prague this year. We're still waiting to find out. That's probably the best rallying we've seen from Wong on the forehand. She almost does a better job when Mukova hits more pace to her on that side. When Mukova hits that slower slice or a higher ball and forcing Wong to generate her own pace, that's where she struggles more. I'm slightly surprised that Mukova hasn't used the slice to go into the Wong Xinyu forehand a little more today. So percentage now below 50. Game one. And it's a double fault. Fourth of the match. Another break of serve. One leads, three games to two. Second set. Law 15. I'll say it quietly, but we may be just about to have our first hold in nine games. Oh. And we'll have two chances to get over the line. Just being a little more consistent than her opponent.
So Wong does hold. And you can see a little chess match going on, can't you? A couple of slices from Mukova trying to change things up. But once again, it's that backhand that's been letting her down. Just looked a little hesitant on those last couple unforced errors from Mukova. A little unsure of herself. You could see as she approached the ball, not looking super confident to hit that with aggression. And on the other side, Wong looks more confident, especially on the forehand. Just found that rhythm and combination of that safety and margin and the next ball stepping up and really accelerating through. Is it fair to say that Carolina Mukova looks like she's not quite sure of her tactics? Seems a little bit muddled. I would agree with that. Not quite sure of the patterns that she wants to try and create against Wong. But that miss, that last miss in particular, I feel like she was set up to hit it. And I think I don't think that's a bad shot. She makes that the majority of the time. But just that slight hesitancy and it just doesn't look as sure as she did in that first set. We saw the disparity, didn't we, with the unforced errors coming off the Wong forehand and the unforced errors coming off the Mukova backhand. Perhaps she needs to go into this match from now on in, attempting to play a left-hander. Just focus on that. One thing's for sure, Mukova is going to continue to pound balls when she can into the Wong forehand. Left person. going to have moments in matches when you're feeling uncomfortable or not feeling at your best and for me I feel like so much of it gets back to your footwork and right there that was a great example Mukova just almost getting frozen on the baseline just need those couple extra steps as well on the break point chance against and sometimes if you just find you one thing to focus on instead of getting caught up and something doesn't feel right, if you can just narrow and clear your mind, just focus on the feet, that can be so valuable. Did you have something you went to if things weren't going your way? My footwork. Mm. That's exactly what I would go to. Because that's usually the first thing that stops when, whether it's you're nervous or whether it's you don't feel great or something doesn't feel right on a certain side. It's, you start to just slow down. And for me, it was all about reminding myself to just keep the feet moving. A crucial hold for Carolina Mukova. Saves the break point, finishes One with a beautiful four ace. 4-3. Four three.
Law 15. She's missed that forehand down the line so often, Wong, and I would love to see her at that stage stay on the cross court. That's a much better margin for her, but it is going to the Mukova forehand, which is can be so dangerous, and that's why she's con consistently trying to use that shot. Felt safer going there because she was in a great position. Going for that approach shot. She's is so nice and low on the backhand side. There it is again. 15, 13. It's also going over the higher part of the net. So at that stage, uh, maybe overcompensate. Go for three, four, five feet over the net, but she's constantly trying to flatten that one out uh, off of a high ball. Yeah, just not in the right position at all to attempt that shot. And there's another forehand error. She's not 15, able 15. to keep her head still as she just looks short of confidence on that side. She just sometimes uses her body too much. She gets her whole upper body and ends up jumping up, and that's why she's lifting so much, making quite a few of the forehand errors long, and that's what happens. Doesn't stay low. Good uh, Jill Krabas to the Wong Xin Yu coaching team. <laughs> Relatively cheap, aren't you? Okay, look at Four games, second set. So the break back completed for Karolina Mukova. That was so nice and calm from Mukova. It was actually a great return. She got the depth that the coach was asking for. It was just Mukova staying nice and low, not trying to rush that forehand. Seen Jill Mukova string too many service points together. This is a good time to do it. to pick up off the return. And ended up getting Wong really off balance right away on that quick pickup from Mukova. Uh, Carolina Mukova holds to love. Where did that come from? One game away from victory. Mukhova leads five games to four, second set. Well, that has been 
completely against the run of play. Very, very smart from Mukova. I don't even think she hit that backhand that cleanly cross court, but the fact that it ended up landing shorter worked in her favor and did a great job of recognizing that it was affected enough to cut that last ball off at the net. It just feels to me, Jill, Love that that something has flipped in the Mukova consciousness. She just looks like she's a lot more confident right now. I think it started in the last service mm. game. Those first quick two points where she served first serves and got up 30 love very quickly. I think from that point on felt that confidence growing. Holds enough. Yeah, that point I felt Mukova maybe a little safe from, from right from the return, just kind of guided the ball back in, into play. And credit for Wong to, to step up in that point. Another 30, back to 30 all. Another short return 30. from Mukova. Brings up a roar of approval on Armstrong Stadium. 13. The crowd here want more tennis. Aaron 36 minutes played. Wow. Wow. And a spectacular finish. Five games all. And two big serves. I, I do feel like once as soon as we start talking Five about the confidence of Mukova at Love 30, I felt she <laughs> did get slightly tentative on the next couple returns. And it just gave that slight opening for Wong. That is Karolina Mukova in vintage fashion. 15. She really does a good job of keeping her focus when she's at the net on the, on the one volley she's hitting. She's not concerned about where her opponent is. It's a great job of picking her spot. She seemed to have done the hard work on the first forehand volley. Scrambling though, right? Slightly off balance. I feel like she should be approaching to the other side of Wong, maybe not as often to the backhand. Sometimes in stressful situations, you sort of go on automatic pilot, That's don't you? That's true.
13-15. Using that slice uh, from the juice court to uh, good effect today. Starting to pick up that first serve percentage as well. It was a tough swing volley to get enough pace on. It was right in the sun. Good coverage from Wong there. 12 total winners from her for the match. Nine have come in this set alone. Yes. Has been nervy, nervy throughout the match really, just never get a sense that Karolina Mukova is feeling comfortable out there. Have been signs though, she throws in a fifth double fault. for Wang Jinyu to break again. Keeping cool under the New York sun, it really is a hot one. Shot selection, you don't often say that about Karolina Mukova. Wong Xinyu has made her move. Wang leads six games to five. He's fighting to stay in this second set. Can Wang Xinyu step up to the plate? Excellent rally overall, Good great consistency from the baseline from Wong. Again, not minding that flatter ball into the forehand side. It forces her to add that acceleration. She made a decision, didn't she, early? Carolina Mukova to hit a forehand off the return. Didn't get the contact right. Oh. 
points away from the third set. Make that one. Working. It's just been a nervous match throughout. Wong Xinyu's team getting a little twitchy. Set point number two. There's that off-pace return from Mukova, just floating in the center of the court. Took her eye off the ball at the last moment. One more chance before this game gets a bit more difficult. Who wants it? <laughs> Just signs of both of them thinking about it a little bit too much. Naturally, it happens. It's, that's where you just got to really dig deep and get that extra focus and concentration. It's not easier said than done, but trying to forget about the moment. Just trying to give that every single ball that intention that Let's 40 love to juice. to hit the swing volley off manages it perfectly Advantage it's a pretty mentally tough turnaround from Wong after the last few tentative points to play this aggressive of a rally with no hesitation excellent job four set points thanks to her 11th winner of the set Amazing in these moments where you feel like you have to force yourself because you know you have to be aggressive and to be able to take that shot right there, that's impressive from Mukova. I don't know about you, Jill, but my heart is pounding. <laughs> they must be going off the walls right now. Oh, it's brilliantly done by Wong Xinyu. Advantage one. Fifth set point. She could do with making a first serve.
It seems like neither player really wants to be a front runner. They're both Move. playing better when they're playing from behind. Gutsy play from, from both of them at some, at some big moments. wrist action on the forehand cross. She's getting much better shots to, to attack when she's staying on that cross court. Can she finish it off on her sixth set point? from Karolina Mukova. We're going the distance. Here we go. The third set shootout about to begin. What needs to change for her, Jill? I think it's her mentality. I think she just lost a little trust in herself in those last few games. In the second set, she was serving for it at 5-4 in really good position. Love 13. Carolina Mukova, of course, a lot more experience in the majors. Runner-up at the French semi-finalist and quarter-finalist elsewhere. Fifteen thirty. That that mindset in particular can be so difficult to to turn around and. Not surprised that she went off the court just to try and reset with the way that second set ended. It was some really good, solid play from Wong, but Mukova definitely took her foot off the gas slightly. Thirteen. Just looking at their third set records from our crack team. 11 and 8 it is for Karolina Mukova in deciding set matches. 7 and 6 for Wang Xinyu. So both with winning percentages. Continues to look unsettled. Coach on the left there doing a nice poker face impression. Important for the coach to stay optimistic, enthusiastic, supportive. The last thing you want to see is your man with their head in their hands. Pattern for Mukova. 
she can just get enough kick to cause Wong some problems on the backhand where it's nice and high and it opens up that down the line for her to pressure the forehand of Wong. Yeah, I wonder if Carolina Mugova uh, just needs to keep it a little bit more simple. She's scared, isn't she, of the Wong Xin Yu backhand? It just seems like that's been affecting her play, her mentality, her mindset. I also think she needs to do that more. Use the kick serve as a first serve. We talked about that earlier in the match. Just to get that rhythm, because you can see it's affecting her that she's not getting a lot of first serves in. Okay. So good start for Karolina Mukova. First game, final back from a bit of a deficit there. One love. Oh, that'll feel good to get on the board right away. Yeah, occasionally in that second set off the first serve when she wasn't making a ton of first serves, you could see her shoulders just drop even before she was hitting the second serve, how much that... of Karina Mukova. Love 13. It's excellent court coverage from both. Some of these gets on the defense from Wong, impressive, just to try and reset the point. But Mukova, good disguise there. Still, Wong had plenty of time on that. Felt like she was choosing the right shot because Mukova was inside the baseline, but great reach on the volley. Going back to that drop shot, we saw a lot of drop shots, didn't we, during the clay court season. It's not quite as effective on the hard court, so you have to be discreet with it and keep it pretty low over the net. Yeah, I think she's normally hitting that drop shot better. I don't feel she's timing it very well today. A lot of them are going very deep, and normally she's got better t touch on that. So I still think it's very effective play for her on the hard court. I just don't think she's executing it very well today. the line from Wong Chin Yu hasn't always been great, but she's hit a couple recently that have been very nice indeed. I think her forehand has gotten better towards the end of the second set. I, and a lot of it from her on that side, you mentioned earlier, comes from that confidence and just being willing to have that extra acceleration. She's still, to me, pulling up a little bit, a bit with the body, but her she's getting her hand through faster, which is helping her. 17 shot rally completed. Oh. And nice from Wong as well on that previous point, not to touch the net. Got to be very careful when you get that close. Oh, 
was a tricky shot for Wong. She was pulled so far out of the court, she really had to go for something big. There's the drop shot again. It sort of is working <laughs> in this very strange way. <laughs> again, not, yeah, had quite a bit of depth on it. And Mukova just guessed the right way on the approach shot and got enough power on that to overpower Wong with the volley. One. With Mukova coming forward into the net, Wong has very rarely gone cross court on the mm. forehand. She's always gone down the line. That's her go to shot, and she's caught Mukova leaning towards the center of the court every time. And if she can just read that play for Mukova, that's a pretty easy volley, isn't it? Shot. Mukova looking to take it on. One game on final set. Go down as an unforced error for the Czech. Now 36 for the match. One more than her opponent. for herself at the 2018 US Open. She was ranked outside the world's top 200. Qualified and reached the third round. Beats Galabina Muguruza en route. Not 15. Just putting her name into the public consciousness right now with a good run. Let's go. said at that point in 2018, she started investing a little more money in a physio, better coaches. She changed clubs. easy Jill isn't it to get some prize money and put it away for a later date but really it is important to invest in yourself absolutely I 100% agree with that it just and she said that her support team is so important to her and how much they've been patient with her as far as being able to grow and progress and that's been such a big factor for her overall Great shot. 
it can be scary to have to take that plunge and invest in yourself because your results are so unsure. And you, a lot of these players, if they don't have the finances to back them, you do end up, especially at the beginning of your career, having to work week in and week out and wondering if you can take that support team. But when you're able to finally do it, it makes such a big difference. Really good depth, those last Four, couple two. shots from Mukova off the ground. What a shot from Wong Xinyu. Good reaction as well. She was sitting on that forehand side, expecting that out wide serve from Mukova. Just a mere 90 mile an hour on that forehand. Another just as fast. Ah! Well, perhaps it was the quality of that return which mm -hmm. forced the double fault from Karolina Mukova, who's now thrown in seven of those throughout the match. that so well doesn't she just that little acceleration and pace to get to the shorter ball she's been great when she's used that backhand angle cross court shorter part of the court and then s sneaking in just seeing Wong go for that slice that's where the ball can keep rising and lifting and it just ends up making it an easier volley coming to the net now 27 times has the check talking about the drop shot they haven't been particularly well executed that one was out of this world Mukova leads two games to one final set
That was good hitting, though. It was a good miss, in my opinion. Struck that Not ball 15. well. She's starting to open the court a little better, Wong, as his match progressed, and she's been better at the angles, much better definitely on the forehand, the cross court, being able to get Mukova in a defensive position more often. She's enjoying her close-ups. When you get to the second week of a major, I'm sure the attention, Jill, is 15. far greater than it ever has been on this young woman. It's something that she'll get used to, I'm sure. Can't be easy, though. A lot more press, I'm sure the Chinese media is going wild. It's unfortunate. Just have to shrug those neck cords off when they go against you. Did you like the media? Did you like all the extra stuff? I love the media, do? Candy. <laughs> when you were playing. <laughs> of course you love it now. I think it's just part of it. I think you got 15, used to it. 15. I don't even think I thought if I didn't if I loved it or, I don't know. I think it was just a part of it, just became part of your routine week in and week out. You knew you had to do it, so just went about, came part of your business. So it's Karolina Mukova for the most experienced player on the court who makes Mukova a move. Three games to one final set. That's a good sign and the first break point to go after that return. She was so far inside the baseline. And she had her chances in that second set backed off right now. 85 Fahrenheit humidity right at 50%. Fifteen forty third edition of the US Open. this year we're celebrating 50 years of equal prize money we started in 1973 let's open a bit of a trailblazer it's the first major to equal offer equal prize money overall player compensation totaling 65 million dollars Won't be a hold to love. Last time, Carolina Mukova, 40 love up behind serve, was in the middle of the first okay, set. Going for the spectacular.
off pace, backhand slice, does its job. Mukova extends her lead, 4-1, third one set. Four games to one, final set. Well, oh, Jill, this is looking a lot more comfortable, isn't it, from the 10th seed? Goes without saying for Wang Xinyu to hold here. Serving at 1-4. She's rattled the 10th seed on multiple occasions so far today. Love Just a slightly dropped her level though. Almost two hours, 30 minutes on the clock. The shadow on the court has moved. much time on that backhand for Mukova to just pick her spot. Both players have done a great job of being able to get it to the feet when the opponent has come forward to the net. Carolina Mukova looking for her ninth break of the match. chances to do it. One goes. Hundred and seven mile an hour serve. Fastest today has been one twelve. It's a brilliant lob over the backhand side. And that's a real blow to Wang Xinyu's chances. Mukova leads five games to one, final sets. Well, Mukova did a great job throughout that entire game of just chipping those returns back and play that off pace, just forcing Wang to try and do something with those shots. But it's been Mukova that has enjoyed just chipping those shots, getting the ball back in play and then stepping up at the right moment. And now, very comfortable lead, serving for the match. Quite a position for Mukova to be in. Don't really feel like she's done anything spectacular this set. I feel like Wong is throwing in a few more unforced errors, but Mukova, what she's done has been very, very solid. Hasn't give, given a ton of free points away. Yeah, she's certainly been helped, hasn't she, by 12 unforced errors from her opponent in this set alone. Too good. 14, 15. Again, using those legs so well, just staying really low on the backhand, back knee up, touching the ground.
Right. So after two hours and 33 minutes, Carolina Mukova, the 10th seed here at this year's US Open, has two chances to end the match. Yeah. At times it wasn't pretty, but Carolina Mukova and her mental strength gets over the line finally. She's into her first US Open quarterfinal.